Surprisingly, when you struggle or you are struggling, people don't seem to realize it. Suddenly, when you make it and they say, Oh, it's gone for blood blood rituals or money rituals. Money has many relatives, yes. But when you are when you're poor, nobody says you have gone for here medicine or poverty medicine. So that is a real money ritual. I don't know. I, I think so. For the those those who have so gone in there, they, they yeah. agree that it's There's there. some element of it working mm. to some I, extent. If it is, I, I want to see how it works. Ah. Yeah. No, but who should go and do so that you see the result? Take yourself. Maybe Johnny can try. So. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, use if my, you know the things me, that underline that me, getting me, if you use the money, my head, you, you don't want if to If you use it. my head, you get coins. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go and pay back. <laughs> Good morning, Ghana. It's Wednesday. Uh, the day that Anas has been waiting for. The day that the whole country has been waiting for. Number 12 is up there. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I was asking, where is number uh, 10 and 11? I know. Uh, <laughs> it's, still, it's still in the pipeline. It's yet to come out. No, but you know, in the, day, you know, in the 70s, we used to go to opera, mm. okay? And uh, those were the days when uh, Chinese uh, movies were involved. Nice. Okay. Uh, five Shaolin Masters, masters yeah. okay. the Drunken Master. We're then I trust my leg. I trust my leg. <laughs> we're then primary school. So we ran away from school uh, and go and watch. And uh, no, it is shown on midday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so before, between let's say 10 and 11, you have to find a way to escape from school and go. Okay. So there is some excitement there's some anxiety mm. how you're going to get there and i think that's the, the omnibus was there yeah. they used to call so it twe. yeah twe, yes yeah, twe. so you could jump into the omnibus <laughs> and get to accra opera yeah. and go opera school and go and watch it, yeah. it I, I i guess i'm getting the same feeling like for for an assist yeah. <laughs> yeah. they used to call it twe. Yeah, yeah, twe. Twe. right you're a naughty boy I mean, then it means boys, on yeah. those days students wouldn't study because you are planning, as you are in the yeah. class, you are orchestrating. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it was the same kind of thing when they started the video game yeah. Yeah. thing. We used to <laughs> run away from school. And, I mean, those of them who went to preparatory <laughs> schools and, you know, you know, private schools, they didn't get a chance to run away. Oh, those no. of us who were it in the Saito yeah. school, yeah. yeah. schools, you know, yeah. I mean, find a way so sometimes run. when you, you mm. skip and you go and play the game and then you miss school, mm. they, they see you and they ask you, quick, when I ask you, they oh, I'll find a year, Shani. I'm for the afternoon shift. If they meet you in the morning, the tell them oh. you're in the morning <laughs> shift. Because people used to make away with right. it. I mean, lying okay. their way away. Well, I guess it's promises to be a good day today. A lot of you are expectant, hoping to see what Anas will come out with. We'll be gauging the mood of some of you. And of course, it's a three-hour package, exciting, uh, making sure that you become a very good member of society. The newspaper mm -hmm. review will come on, yeah. will also rant, mm -hmm. and then we'll a whole lot. Yeah. But the news will also be there. That yeah. gentleman called Anthony Jackson is here with us. He is. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Jackson. Are you going to watch number it 12 It looks like today. he's in number 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like one of the 40 referees. <laughs> well, you, 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 you wouldn't want to be left out of all the, you mm. know. Okay, if everything. you stay at home, Twitter would... Give you now everything. everything. Yeah, you you start yeah. feeling bad yes, that you like, didn't go. I had a chance to be there. I, did, yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. I the went before you're like, oh, I even had a ticket. I don't want to be that <laughs> person who says you want to go see yeah. yourself. <laughs> this morning I was so I, I was so angry. I, I on our platform, New Day platform, I saw George. Uh, saying that, oh, he is apologizing to the house if he, he is seen in the analysis video. And I said, but George, you... Why does he want to be called? Who? Anas doesn't have your time. Anas doesn't have your time. It's time now for the news for the morning. Hello and good morning. Coming to you once again from our news hub here at Adesawe. This is New Day Morning News coming up in the next 20 minutes. And sports, Edwin Neal and Tim Vanderpoy, also MP for Ododio, is expectant the premiering of Anas's latest expose titled Number 12 when 
misconduct and greed become the norm. We're vindicating heads of security agencies warn public of dire consequences if there is any disturbance before, during and after the first public viewing of Anas's investigative piece. An Accra Circuit Court orders medical director of the Accra Regional Hospital to produce CEO of Obingfo Hospital, Dr. Dominic Obing Andor, in court. Now on to our very first story. The National Identification Authority has so far registered about 150 personnel of the Jubilee House after it started the process at the presidency on Monday, June 4, conducting President Ekufu Addo around the registration centers at the Jubilee House. Chief Executive Officer Professor Ken Atifua expressed confidence the process across the country will be a success. The registration process started at about 4 p.m. on Monday, June 4, with registration of some 47 workers at the presidency. The issuance of the national identification cards is among key projects government promised to execute to formalize Ghana's economy. President Ekofado Tuesday afternoon, led by the CEO of the National Identification Authority, inspected the registration process at the Jubilee House. Professor Ken Atefa spoke to the presidential press corps after the inspection. In the course of the day, we have been able to issue 139 cards instantly to applicants. We've got um, 41 cards issued yesterday when we started um, around 4 o'clock. And today, as I indicated, 139. Um, we have 100 and, um, 115 people who have filled application forms, out of which um, 78 uh, have been enrolled and a few are just still awaiting to receive their cards. What I want to emphasize is that this process is going to go well. We are um, entreating Ghanaians to be patient. He spoke about requirement for the registration. The critical importance of every person coming to register, bringing all the state-issued identity documents that they have apart from your passport or birth certificate that you bring for registration at this phase, you must also bring with you your voter ID card, your driver's license, your tax identification number, your digital address, your national health insurance uh, card, your SNET card, and indeed any other state issued, your Ghana card if you have one, um, you are required to produce those documents. We are, it's important that we capture those documents. We take a photo, I mean an electronic copy of it, and we return them to you. But that will assist in data harmonization and integration when we know, um, the database is constructed. Registration of staff at the presidency is expected to last 10 days before rolling out the nationwide process. And our former Minister for Youth and Sport, Edwin Nielante van der Poy, also MP for the DoD, is expectant that premiering of Anas's latest expose titled Number 12, When Misconduct and Greed Become the Norm, will vindicate him. According to the former minister, it was his intention to investigate issues of Ghana football when he was in charge of youth and sports, but was limited by the change of government. As Aremeyao Anas's latest expose is on corruption in Ghana football, fingering top officials, including GFA boss Chris Nyantechi. Though the investigative piece is to be premiered at the Accra International Conference Centre on Wednesday, June 6, excerpts have already been screened to President Akufuado, who subsequently called for the arrest of the GFA boss Chris Nyantechi. The whole thing is about. Um, something that the Lord put on my heart when I was minister, I intended to do, and unfortunately, uh, the change of government did not permit me to do it. So it is my prayer that uh, the film will touch on the same issues, and I know God wants um, those issues to come to the fore so that I will be vindicated. And so I'm, I'm great expectations. I'm, I'm, I will be there. I hope, I hope to be, I hope to be in the queue by one o'clock. We've been sent some uh, tickets to that effect. I mean, some members of my committee, uh, youth sports and culture committee. When all the stories out there is 
about sports. And so um, there's a need for us to also go and uh, view what it is so that uh, at least we have an informed uh, uh, position to maybe speak on the matter. Yes, I would like to watch the premium tomorrow. I know for sure I'll get a ticket. You know, uh, this is in line with the cause of fighting corruption in the country. And so for him taking that giant step to risk his life, risk his job, his family, put all those things online to get this result, why not? We have to all go to look at it, watch it to see whether what they've been saying is true or false. Still on Anasa's latest expose, heads of key security agencies have warned of dire consequences should anyone cause trouble before, during and after the public viewing of the expose by investigative journalist Anas on June 6. Speaking exclusively to TV3 Solid Rose Quarty, the PRO for the Accra Regional Police, DSP Efiatenge, assured the general public that the service, in collaboration with other security agencies, has instituted measures that will guarantee an incident-free day provided patrons adhere to the laid-down rules and regulations. Probably the most popular number currently in Ghana. I'm talking about the number 12, which happens to also be the name for the latest expose by investigative journalist Anas Arumeyao Anas. Now, this is supposed to be happening on the 6th of June 2018. That is the first viewing. We're looking at four viewings, uh, 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 9 p.m. And at the end of the day, that is 6th June, we would be expecting about 6,000 people, Ghanaians, or non Ghanaians to have viewed this expose that sheds the light on supposed corruption activities on the part of the president of the governing GFA, that's the Ghana Football Association. The organizers were busy at work when the news team arrived at the premises where the investigative piece would be premiered. The most outstanding of preparations was that of security. So far, so good. We are setting up. Um, we are trying to set up the stage. We are trying to set up the booth for um, um, TV stations and radio stations to be able to broadcast live for any event um, that you, you need to prepare for risk. Whether it will happen or not, you need to prepare. So we are just want to be cautious. Several briefings were ongoing between the heads of national security, the military, police and the fire service. PRO for the Accra Regional Police, DSP Efia Tenge, was quick to throw a word of caution to any miscreants who might want to take undue advantage of the event to engage in any nefarious activities. It is not as if the program is a free for all program. Before you have access into the auditorium or the center, you need to have your card that is permitting you to enter. Otherwise, the police will not allow you. She assured the general public of utmost security at the event grounds come June 6 and 7. We expect that you comport yourself as much as you can and give the police the necessary cooperation because we have to ensure that your life is protected to the maximum. Attendees will be screened by a walkthrough and baggage scanner positioned at the entrance of the auditorium. The public is advised to avoid carrying any offensive weapons. Now, the Kutuka International Airport's Terminal 3 project will be commissioned on October 5. The sector minister, Cecilia Abnadapa, announced this at the Kutuka International Airport without giving reasons for the delay. The six boarding bridge Kutukan International Airport Terminal 3 project was to be handed over to the Ghana Airport Company in April. The sector minister, Cecilia Benadapa, disclosed this when she toured the five-level terminal project on Wednesday, March 21, to assess progress of work. The minister again assured Ghanaians the project, a major facelift for the Kutukan International Airport, will be handed over and commissioned on schedule at various platforms. However, the month of May has ended without any news on the state of commissioning. Auxiliary works including link roads, construction of pavements and other fittings were in progress as of Monday, June 4. So when will the project be ready for public use and commissioned? We should have uh, commissioned it 
the president will do that uh, honor, will have that do as the honor on that day. But it's been pushed to 5th October because of uh, some schedule beyond control. Cecilia Bnadapa also hinted at the commencement of work on phase two of the Kumasi airport this week. We are going to have the short cutting on Wednesday at 12 noon. His Excellency the President is going to do that. Work on the $250 million Terminal 3 project commenced on October 3, 2015 by the Ghana Airport Company with support from government. It has 56 check-in desks, 30 passport control centers, 22 airline ticketing offices, 4 e-gates and 2 boarding launches have been installed. The terminal has the capacity to process 1,250 passengers per hour and up to 5 million passengers a year with an expansion potential of up to 6.5 million passengers. Still on aviation, the sector minister Cecilia Abnadapa has called for an investigation into alleged mismanagement of toilet facilities at the Kotoka International Airport. Cecilia Abnadapa has also urged the Ghana Airport Company to expedite action on the impending rehabilitation of toilets at the arrival hall deemed substandard and inappropriate. The Kotoka International Airport went viral on social media for the wrong reason. Checks revealed the public toilet at the rival hall was in a very bad state compelling a visitor to record it and share on social media which attracted public criticism. Many Ghanaians in the diaspora and even expatriates were left wondering what might have gone wrong. The sector minister Cecilia Bernadapa Monday morning dashed to the airport to ascertain the real state of toilet facilities there. More investigations will be done, but I just wanted to rush here and uh, make all of us aware that we are not compromising on good sanitation practices. We are not compromising on the fact that the place should be maintained. And then we should know that people should be put there 24-7. Most toilet visited at the arrival hall were in good shape, except this which appeared to need immediate attention. Parts of the toilet seats in both the male and female section have been eaten out by corrosion. From the analysis made, a lot of traffic is on the female and the male washroom. And I will entreat all of us royal Ghanaians who have the benefit of using these washrooms to practice good hygiene as well. Cecilia Benadapa urged Ghanaians to be responsible for state property. We should all take charge of the place. When we use the place, we should leave the place clean. It's a basic rule. And I believe when we do practice that, we can have a better place to uh, do our own private things. You know, entering a washroom is a very private thing. And you don't want to get out with a stench all over you. TV3 checks revealed the facility was awarded to contract in February this year for rehabilitation, but the contractor is yet to report on site. Away from the aviation sector, Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Frimpom Watin says a ban on plastic is a solution to solving Ghana's sanitation problems. At a ceremony to mark World Environment Day, he noted that though the ban will be rolled out gradually, it will contribute to managing the negative effects of plastics on sanitation. Plastic is arguably the most notable substance in the technological, scientific and medical research boom since its rise to mass commercial use. It is used in infrastructure, transportation, electronics, among others. In spite of its numerous benefits, burning the substance releases toxic fumes into the atmosphere, posing health risks and contributing to climate change. This makes plastics extremely difficult to get rid of in an ecologically sound manner. In Ghana, only 2% of plastic that is generated into waste is recycled. LI2250 requires those who manufacture beverages you know, to take back the containers. So we will enforce that one to the letter also. And we have already held preliminary discussions with industry so that they will set up you know, take back system. You will put a price on the container so that you, know, you encourage the public to return them and then you pay them that amount. And that one will I mean, make, enable us to get enough material for recycling. Minister for Environment, Professor Frimpong Boating, noted a plastic policy will soon be implemented. 
This, he said, will include its gradual ban. At some point, there will be ban on plastics. It will, it will be part of the policy. And also, probably the introduction of also biodegradable plastic. We are not coming out to say we are going to ban all plastics because that is not possible. A lot of people depend upon sachet water uh, in areas where they have no access to even clean water. And therefore, it will, be, it will not be wise to, to have a total ban of plastics. We don't want a situation where we cannot enforce what we legislate. Recycling initiative by private enterprises express commitment to rid the country of the damaging effects of excessive plastic waste. The reality is that for many years our society has been benefiting from plastics, paper, aluminum and other materials as well, without thinking about what happens at the end of its lifespan. To beat plastic pollution, we need to move from this take-make disposal system into a more circular economy in which used plastics become resources for new products and new materials. And we will not be able to do that unless we collaborate and work all together. In Africa, Kenya and Rwanda have actually banned plastic bags. Now, the National Petroleum Authority is likely to miss December 2018 deadline of rolling out the cylinder recirculation module. The MPA is yet to issue licenses for the construction of bottling plants required to ensure a successful implementation of the intervention. The cylinder recirculation module to be implemented it requires bottling plants which are responsible for filling the cylinders at designated centers to be distributed for domestic, commercial and industrial purposes. In all, eight bottling plants are required to ensure a successful implementation of the module. However, the MPA is yet to issue a license for the construction of the first plant six months to the deadline of the implementation. Head of safety at the MPA, Esther Anku, says the companies expected to construct the bottling plants are yet to finalize the plans with the authority. December this year, we started the processes in November also last year, but realistically, we might not meet that deadline because according to the earlier roadmap that we developed, we we're expecting the first bottling license to have been issued around March. But then the requirements rather, so there is a delay. Apart from a bottling plant, the module also requires a cylinder exchange point, which is also yet to be established. Meanwhile, MPA boss Hassan Tampoli is optimistic that the process, when fully implemented, would serve its purpose of supplying clean and safe LPG for all purposes. It's been almost 30 years since we started um, this current model of LPG distribution. But the test of longevity is legacy. The legacy of the current model of LPG distribution would determine whether it is a more, much more better arrangement than what we intend to roll out. And to also understand what you are doing, you need to also look around. Apart from looking within, look around yourself and see what exactly are others doing. Are they getting the same results as you? Do you face the same problems as the other neighboring countries? And thirdly, you also have to look at the broader objective of deepening the penetration of LPG consumption in the country. According to the MPA, there are currently 645 LPG refill stations across the country, with MPA staff strength of a little over 250 across the country. It will need the cylinder recirculation model to achieve its target of increasing LPG penetration from its current 23% to 50% by year 2030. Now to some international news. Facebook Incorporated said Tuesday it has data sharing partnerships with at least four Chinese companies, including Huawei, the world's third largest smartphone maker, which has come under scrutiny from U.S. intelligence agencies on security concerns. The social media company said Huawei, a company maker, Lenovo Group, and smartphone makers, Oppo and TCL Corp, 
were among about 60 companies worldwide that received access to some user data after they signed contracts to recreate Facebook-like experiences for their users. Members of Congress raised concerns after the New York Times reported on the practice on Sunday saying data of users' friends could have been accessed without their explicit consent. Facebook denied that and said the data access was to allow the users to access account features on mobile devices. It said on Tuesday it would end the Huawei agreement later this week. It is ending the other three partnerships with Chinese firms as well. But that's it for news for this morning. New Day return shortly after this break. Welcome back. Now, as Father's Day approaches on the 16th of June, uh, the Daily Graphic, 3FM 92.7, and I can brand events and uh, promotions are doing something special. So buy uh, a copy of the Junior Graphic today, this morning. Turn to page 7. There's a page properly cut out there. Tear it out. Write a memo to your dad. Put it in there, drop it off at TV3 or 3FM 92.7 or the graphic uh, offices at Adabraka and you stand a chance to win special prizes from uh, the Father's Day promo that we're putting together along with the mirror and all of that. So take very good advantage of this. But on to our front pages. BNFT says, a Greek needs more oil cash. Piak, we need a fund for women businesses. Okay. Uh, World Environmental Day collective action must be taken to beat plastic pollution in Africa. And uh, those are the BNFT stories. But what I told you about the junior graphic is not just for uh, those in Accra. So you can send it uh, from other parts of, of Ghana, from all the 10 regions. Just let's celebrate our dads just as we celebrated our moms. The Daily Guide this morning says, Major Mahama Widow thanks Nana. And that's a beautiful picture of uh, a soldier's wife with the president, the commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Eight million dollar NDC campaign cash. Yan Techi reveals and asks friends. Okay, NDC lies too much, too much, says Rollins. And doctors defend Obingfo Hospital. That's there. Uh, Major Boachi Chan says President Rollins doesn't tell lies. Uh, he's just not as intelligent as he looks. Uh, he said that to us on Monday. Well, the Finder newspaper says, Ghana football's day of shame. Anas unveils the rot over 100 top officials face ban and jail. Cylinder recirculation uh, reserved for Ghanaians, NPA, and we need forensic audit into unreported 915 million Ghana cities ESLA receipts. And uh, NAPCO, 49,523 applicants book interview dates. That's good news. 50% of mass lock loans for women, President Ekufuado says so. So we're making progress in that direction as well. On to our next newspaper for today. Uh, Daily Graphic says EC alleged corruption probe lawyers to file responses by June 8. And Anasis number 12 premieres today is at 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center. Uh, head your way if you have a ticket. Real, real building begins. Accra and Swamp stretch to bounce back soon. Special report, sleepless in New Bawi. Okay. Hmm. Is Bawi safe or is it not? We'll find out some more. Canadian Times says, efforts at achieving gender quality, equality by 2030. Analysis number 12 video shows at the Crown International Conference Center today and underperforming MMDC's face suck, according to Ishmael Ashiti, who's a greater Accra regional minister. Big boost for female entrepreneurs. 30% of government contracts to go to them. Newmont, we welcome investigative report into accident. Okay, so those are the front pages. But as I said earlier, go grab a copy of the Junior Graphic today, the Mirror, in partnership with uh, 3FM and ICANN, are putting together a very special package for, uh, what do you call it, the Father's Day special. So if you buy a Junior Graphic wherever you are in this country, you can write the letter. I don't know why Hyred keeps insisting that it's across, but Junior Graphic is sold everywhere in this country. So when you buy it, you tear it, you write the memo, and you drop it off. 
It's <laughs> as simple as that. But okay. Bright, I, I don't feel the Father's Day. Uh, we <laughs> said it. You know, when, we said it. When is it? We said it, 16 June. Even know, we said it. Today is okay. six. Even so know 10, when days, is. 10 days down the line, mm. apart from what 3FM and Mirror and ICAMS are doing, nobody cares about us. Uh, it is, nobody. It is silent. It's silent. Amma is here. Mother's Day. Uh, <laughs> it's just just interesting <laughs> because I've t I keep telling you, the relationship I have with my father, he celebrated as well on Father's oh Day. So maybe it's just individuals or See, it's your thoughts. She was your like, mind. Uh, women, so we'll just leave it at like that. But there are See? other issues. Maybe, can we get... And, and us to take a look at why. Yeah, why fathers yeah, are not celebrating. Yeah, it will be a nice yeah. expose. Like, we'll investigate you first. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, right. but today, of course, it's on us unveiling the rot and mm. the fact that many people will probably be incriminated in this particular expose. And that's what I think many people have been talking about mm. and why Nyantechi is being fingered or being mm. highlighted. I mean, that, that will be seen today. The full details will come out. But I think then it goes back to the whole issue about whether the president's advice to the CID to pick him up was preempted and maybe mm. he should have just waited for today because subsequently after that we haven't had any other information yeah. and I guess it's because the CID will be waiting for the full details of the video to be able to proceed with the investigation so yeah. maybe it, we could have just waited but then again it just highlighted what mm. the rot that is going to be revealed today could be yeah. and so I guess people are looking out mm. to, for that but again I'm worried about the security detail and the fact that we would always have miscreants trying mm. to find their way into these things mm. and so everyone who's going out there should be on the alert for themselves because mm. even though the police and security will be on the high you have to also make sure you are keeping yourself safe mm. otherwise then everything will escalate and people should just go it's a video it's there to be watched so that you can learn a few things from it so that mm. when you go into your various institutions you make sure you're practi practicing using the mm. you know best standard of care I and that's I what it is I let's I not go I and misbehave mm. i think mm. that um you know passions have been inflamed over mm. the past few weeks about you know what to expect in the video mm. and people may be tempted to take the law into their hands which is why yesterday uh, DSP if you attend get mm -hmm. mentioned that look uh, if you come misbehaving they may decide that okay we'll, the other other public viewings will not even show or will not air I think also that I like the fact that some statements including President uh, Kufo have said that um, people in the video should be dealt with according to the law. Yeah. So not that people would start matching, for example, if it does appear that Mr. Kwesinyantic is found culpable in the video or any referee that they know is found culpable, mm -hmm. and you rush to their home and start vandalizing their property, and all that would be tantamount to taking the law into your own hands, would allow the law to work. But then I, I side with Amma on the security detail. Um, oftentimes we've been told that, yes, this, the police will be there, we'll do the checks and everything else. But in this day of technological advancement where people are able to even mutilate some of the gadgets that the police have to be able to do these things, it's important that they stay on a double or triple alert right. to protect all of us. Very important personalities will be turning up at the Accra International Conference Center. This is a big national issue. And with all the twists and turns that are coming to it, it's important that we jealously guard it, right. you know, and, 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 and make sure that all things go well. Mm. Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, this matter has already uh, seen a lot of uh, commentary. I, I really do not know again what uh, would have to be said, but I, I am thinking that in as much as this is good for the fight against corruption, mm. I do not think that this one-off mm. expose is, okay, Mm -hmm. uh, will in any way uh, either speed up or uh, add anything huge to our fight against mm -hmm. corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen analysis being to uh, our borders, the uh, cuckoo okay. smuggling. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've seen him uh, being to our ports. Mm -hmm. We've seen him uh, in the in judiciary. Process. I doubt if these institutions, mm -hmm. if they are, have seen any dramatic changes mm. since he went there i can tell you today the ports mm. people are still complaining mm. there are still national security guys at the various gates who will want to take if you see this from <laughs> before you finally even when you've gone through the proper checks mm. okay they'll tell you hey you got to do something before you leave okay so and it's still there i don't think the smuggling has changed mm. or has stopped and so in as much as this is good, uh, will help the fight against corruption, uh, the efforts at dealing with this problem 
should not be seen in only this. Yeah. I, I, I'm hopeful our yeah. authorities would simply not say that, well, a nurse will do it, so let's leave it to a nurse. Yeah. Let's, I think it's, it's a matter for everyone. It is. It is not only for it is. Uh, public officials. It is a canker we must all help to uh, uproot. Mm. And this is only <laughs> one of the ways. In fact, for me, it's, it's just about 1%. Because okay. even whilst this video is being shown, so certain so corrupt will, will be corrupt somewhere. Uh, uh, will be on So uh, that it shouldn't uh, end there. It mm. should be all of us somewhere. Don't let us, for me, let's allow those who will be seen in the <laughs> video. If you see me in the video, fine. <laughs> they, like Johnny said, don't attack me. Let us allow them to yeah. have their day exactly. in, in court. In court. Yeah. Okay. We can see Mr. Yantich is already in the news, but he will have his day in court and explain yeah. why what I happened really happened. Yeah. And if the court says, that, well, what you did is wrong, well, I am not the one to pass the judgment. Yeah. So that then we allow people who are in it to be able to go to court and answer mm -hmm. if they have questions to answer. And then we can mm -hmm. move on. But I think that it is, it is not in any way adding to... Well, uh, well, well, what I, what I think that what Anas largely wants to do or intends to do is to name and shame. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then the action must be taken by the appropriate authority. Right. The question is, uh, rightly as you asked, if, so what if we didn't have Anas? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what, would, what, would, what would become of, of all these exposés that we get? Is it something that is intrinsically wrong with us as a people where people are find themselves in positions and they can't have a bit of a shred of integrity in running that office mm -hmm. and they will have to dissipate funds and denigrate the sanctity of that office mm -hmm. what is it how 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 long ago did we deteriorate and and get down into those gutters mm -hmm. those are questions that we need to be asking okay. ourselves and if you really say you are patriotic mm -hmm. You don't need an anas to be able to do what is right. right. You should be doing what is right. Mm. And, and I, th I think that we must start rethinking about some of these things again. You know, a national reorientation is very crucial and it important. Is. But on that note, let's step out to run. You, you, know, you, know, you know how, you know the how uh, there, are, there are people who serve in government, like Reverend Chris Hesse. Mm. He served with Dr. Nkrumah. Right. He was a cameraman traveling around the world. Mm -hmm. What did he bring home? KB Asante, what did he bring home? People are too quick to collect, you know, and that's a shame. It's a shame. Anyway, but so on that I, note, good we'll morning. Step if you are collecting, shame oh, on you. Geez. Shame on you. If you are collecting, shame on you. Let's tell them, shame on you. They know, shame on you. Shame Stop on what you. you're doing. But anyway, we're also asking the question what are your expectations today as ANAS releases the expose number 12 at the Accra International Conference Center from 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m.? Let's see what you have to say as you rant with George Queenan. Privy to the content of the latest analysis expose number 12, and but some excerpts sparked some controversy in the country. It's going to be premiered today and tomorrow. So, what is the public expectation of the expose? This is Daily Rant. Let's keep talking. I think there is obviously going to be some form of revolution that I am definitely sure of. There's going to be a bit of change after the video. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of change. But this is not the first time Anas has brought, uh, you know, a piece like this. And, and still corruption still happens. No, it, it happens, but we are not saying, we are not saying that as it stands now, the public is not aware. You know, corruption at one point in time was very silent. It's not as if people were not doing it. It was going on in its large sums, but people were not really very much aware of it and as it stands now. Exactly. Exactly. But as it stands now, I think people know, okay, like people are aware of it. And when, when they hear issues of this sort, people, people are becoming more discerning, especially the voters, like, you know, people who cast their ballots. They want to know, they want to understand, they ask questions, how, why, what was the motive, to understand, before they even make, you know, decisions with reference to voting and all that. So, in a way, it's going to affect the nation at length. 
That's why I said there's going to be a revolution. There's surely going to be a change. <coughs> but as to whether it's going to be a positive one or negative, well, I cannot tell. I feel that this is one of the biggest um, exposés we are going to have in this country. Um, a lot of the exposés are people we don't know of. Like talking of the ports, they are people you don't know yeah, who yeah, are working there. Yeah, yeah. But for this GFA, we know the names that are coming up. There are people we meet <laughs> day in, day out. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to blow a lot of minds. It's going to be quite big. And I think that there will be a change in the country after okay. this. Yeah. We <laughs> have not seen the whole video. Right. We've only seen excerpts. And uh, I'm sure by close of today, we'll see what exactly the, the details are. But you can see that this is a serious matter because it involves even the president's allegations and the things that have been said even with the, the chief of the deputy chief of staff yeah. and the formation five two five three two one one that kind of football. Is, uh, this, all that. Is, yeah, no, no. Let me learn. When you were speaking, when you were speaking, no, I think that this is, let us encourage. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. No, but don't, don't, don't. I think they should set modalities when they were speaking. Okay, you talk, talk, talk. Interfere. So let me, let me learn. So, so, so. The, 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 the point is that it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a something that I'm sure everybody wants to watch and uh, we must be careful as to how things are going because of the fact that Kennedy Japan is saying something different about who watches over the watchman and all of that. Of course, but that, that's yes, tangible. Yeah. I mean, and so I can't wait to see what is going to happen there. But Trust me, this is long overdue. I think these things will come up. We will fight, we will be happy. Yeah, yeah, this one is corrupt, this one is that. that after some time, it fades. And the people we replace the old people with. They will still do the yeah, same Yeah, they, they will be the same uh, people. More, more so it boils down to the human attitude. If you, are, if, you are, if you are fake or you are corrupt, you are corrupt. Sure, so you can't actually as you rightly say, it boils down to human attitude. Because honestly, I'm seeing um, these activities of Anas as like an exercise in futility. Yeah. Yeah. Ghanaians will just reek of corruption. <laughs> no matter what you do, the corruption still goes on. Exactly. So it will be um, very painful for him to sacrifice his time, resources to bring out <laughs> I love the word painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, seriously, it's too very painful. This because Ghanaians are very yeah, yeah, disobedient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it keeps going. Exactly. So it will so it be, be very painful after putting all, all this time and other resources, and yet still the corruption you are, you are, you are trying to eradicate is still ongoing. Okay. Look, look at our uh, 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 post, for instance, after all, after the cuisine. At least it's paperless. Sure. The but still, the, 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 still, it's still, it's still, it's still oh, paperless, yeah, but yes, the people I, maneuver I, with. That's, what, sure. that's why like, I, I can't yeah, fathom. Sure. I, I just can't comprehend. Sure. People that's maneuver I, with. Just, to, 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 to still typhoon, you know, still typhoon, the, 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 uh, Mother Ghana's money. To, for me, to, to I, 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 trust, I trust that after this whole documentary expose, at least oh, we will tackle corruption and no, entirety. But George, because George, maybe George, if you want George, to do George, any yes. forest act, George, George, you know maybe an answer around. So, George, so George, we, must understand, we must understand that we cannot have zero tolerance for corruption. Exactly. The purpose of fighting corruption can be reduced. But the point is that corruption, we can't have zero tolerance for corruption. The point own. is that a Juma Juma corruption can be reduced to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when, when, when an expose comes, the it, it exposes the fact that this is what's happening. Take steps to, to uh, you know, eradicate that. But you can't say that it will go, it will, it will be zero no, when it comes. No, 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 no it is not possible. My, corruption my, my corruption is a whole industry on its own. I feel that names are going to be mentioned. Yeah, that that's, that's how, that's how, how, how are we going to digest this whole video as a country? Good. Like two hours long video. Good. The president just watched five minutes and then heads are... So you can imagine the names that will come up and how long it will take us. I think this this will, this will go very far. No, this this this. No, no, that one that one is from the different side. That one that one that one that one is from the different side. No, no, no. That one wasn't in the video. It's not in the video. It's not in the video. It's not in the video. Why should you be in the video? That one here, it shouldn't come there. No, no, no. And no, you should look. It's not in the video. No, 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 not that one. I'm talking about the video, the content, like the people and the issues. That and as you said that, it's not even true. Okay. The thing is, it seems we don't really, you know, know the extent of damage corruption does to us as a country and then yeah. citizens. Because we have... It's not like it seems. We don't want to... We don't, we don't want to... Okay. Because we have, you know, the Assin Central MP, yes. you know, bashing this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Which I agree and with. I fear, uh -huh. I fear, uh -huh. if anti-corruption crusaders uh -huh. hang their boots, uh -huh. will be like... No, 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 I was having um, uh, uh, an issue with the, the activities um, or the approach Anas was using, fine, with this entrapment issue. But 
honestly, to be to be clear, to be clear about it, if you are not corrupt, even if you are entrapped 77 by seven times, you you you. Not Jesus no, 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 no. It's not a matter of being Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. If you are incorruptible, you are incorruptible. No, even if you are entrapped 77 by seven times, you surely you surely come close. No, no, no. You see, you see, no, no. You see, the point is. Show me one person. No, no. The point, the point is. The point, no, no. The point is to bring them out, to bring to bring them out and expose them. You are coming from them. No, to be. No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, listen, the point, is, the, the point is very simple. The point is very simple. The point is very simple. <laughs> to be able to expose Lesser. them and undercover Give me one them. person who is one, you should be, one, you, 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 you're supposed to be with them. You're supposed to be with them. No, 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 we don't know him. Ah, no, we don't know him. We don't know him. No, no, we don't know him. 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 Most people in Ghana don't even know Anas. So what is Anas? So what is Anas? Anas is a guy. You can't hold him. You can't hold him. I'm saying this. I'm saying this because GJA, GJA, he's a member of GJA. Yes. And they are calling for security for him. Yes. Okay. And they should provide the security. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. No, no, no. But the point is that. But the point is that. We don't know. That has been said. My problem with Anas, okay, is um, is, is the fact it's all honestly also got to do with his methodology. However, I am thinking, I am thinking, it looks like that is the only way he can be getting things. But how? For him, for him, for him. How about Manasi Azure? How about Manasi Azure? How about Manasi Azure? Manasi Azure is one person who is known all over the place. All right. You see, just because. He he comes up with stuff. Manasseh doesn't do Even if he doesn't do it himself, at the end of the day, it is he, he who skimmed it. Listen, I have only two issues with Anas. I have only two issues. It's just simple. His methods and no, no, no. the, the editing he does. You see, you don't sit in your room. No, 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 no. Oh, can you keep quiet? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the, the, the editing is there. Oh, oh, oh. The video, the video can be like three days. The video can be like three days. Let me edit it. 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 We saw that have to one day this we saw that he used and he editing his video. Does he edit it? You don't you don't he told his editing. No, you don't say that. But you know he edits a video. No, 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 so you don't sit in your room, edit it, choose who is called, and come and show it. No, 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 no
The finder uh, continues the Anaz's expose. It uh, goes like Anaz unveils the rot over 100 top officials face ban jail. That's the story there. And uh, the Daily Guide uh, takes a, a twist and says $8 million NDC campaign cash. Yantichi reveals Anaz's friends. Okay. And uh, NDC lies too much, Rawlings. Uh, doctors uh, defend or bim for the times uh, is also carrying the NAS uh, story. NAS number 12 video shows at AICC today. And a uh, big boost for female entrepreneurs. We'll talk about that. 30% of government contract to go to them. Those are some of the uh, papers I have with me. My guest this morning is a member of Parliament for Infants and a member of the NPP, Honorable Kohayford Esie. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Uh, You've been away for some time. Yes. <laughs> by, by the grace of God, I'm doing great. And uh, it, it's been a while, like you, you said. Right. Uh, let me take this opportunity, as usual, to greet your cherished viewers. Mm. Uh, my special greetings goes to our Muslim communities. You know, uh, this is a month they have set aside to, to fast for this country. Right. And, uh, we are wishing them well as they continue to fast. Uh, I can also not finish without thanking the people of Infantsman as usual. Uh, I'm here by their kind courtesy. Uh, this weekend uh, in Sopon, we are launching our Adambia festival. So to the sons and daughters of Sopon, you are welcome home. Come and let's join in, in the launch of our Adambia festival. Mm. We're grateful. We'll be there to support you. And uh, let's start a conversation with the Anas. It's all over. Uh, every newspaper has it this morning. Uh, we're told 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 10, uh, 9 p.m. We'll see the video. Now, what would you say for you would be your biggest surprise for today? The fact that what is being in the public domain will be seen in the video, or perhaps we'll go there and might not see <laughs> what we were expecting. <laughs> I don't know uh, why the, the producer chose to uh, <laughs> uh, play Kakai, <laughs> but today <laughs> is Kakai, okay. and uh, it's, today is more like the Judgment Day. Mm. Uh, I will not be surprised. I would never be surprised. Because I know what Anas stand for. I know his integrity. Nothing in the video would surprise me. Nothing in the video will surprise me. And nothing in the video will change what people have been perceived as what is happening. Mm. Uh, the interesting thing is you, you, the, the whole focus is on the Ghana football. Right. Uh, and how football in Ghana has been managed. We are all waiting as Ghanaians to see what will happen today. At the end of the day, the good people of this country can make an informed decision as to what was speculated has been the reality. Obviously, uh, there are a lot of issues when you look at the names that has come up, uh, the number of uh, officials that have been indicted, the number of uh, football officials. <laughs> I, I think it's, it is going to change the image of Ghana football. And I can't wait to see uh, the first show being screened on, 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 on uh, Ghana International Conference Center. I don't want to pass comments on, on the content because once I haven't gotten the full accept of it, uh, I would not. But I, I hope from next week going, uh, Ghanaians will be in a better position to make informed decisions as to what uh, Anas has been speculating is really the reality on the ground. So for now, what I will say is I want to keep my fingers crossed. Mm. I know it's, a, it's about football. And at the end of the day, we, we expect to see uh, prescriptions because this is not the first time a such uh, video has, has gone on. Uh, we remember that during, the, 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 I think, the last one, we had some judges uh, going home, some going on interdiction, the expose at... Uh, the, the, the Ghana, uh, the ports. Mm. You saw how the former, the late former uh, president was scared about it. And you realize that at the end of the day, this thing goes a long way to change certain things in this country. So I, everybody is anxious. Everybody is waiting for the kakai. Mm. And the kakai will surely drop today. And at the end of the day, 
we will take it one by one, digress it, and those who uh, are going to be affected, <laughs> the evidence is there, the due process of should the be law done. Should be done so that it will build the image of Ghana football. It has been an issue, but at the, at the end of the day, if you don't have any evidence, you can't make any case. But I think what we are going to see today would change Ghana football and will also be a wake-up call on will be people who are also in the same soup. Maybe the next time, who knows whether it will come to uh, parliament or it will go to um, uh, maybe the media. Nobody knows. Mm. So everybody is on the wake-up to see the Kakai dropping today. Okay, I'm grateful. Let me introduce my second guest, a member of the NDC's team, Sami Chenfi, is here too. Sami, good morning. Good morning, Bright. Hope you're doing great. Uh, by the grace of Almighty God, you? Mm. I'm good too. All right. Right, so the conversation has just started and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's well known uh, by 3 p.m. I guess the first videos will start rolling at the Accra International Conference Center. Uh, uh, for you, is there anything in the video that is if you go to see it that will surprise you about the fight against corruption and what we're doing? Thank you very much, Bright. And uh, first of all, let me say a very good morning to our cherished viewers. Mm. Obviously, today is a dreadful day for corrupt football officials in this country and corrupt politicians in this country. Today will be another day of reckoning for them. And some of us have been waiting for this day to come. And at long last, today has come. The D day is here. And we will have the opportunity to watch this latest investigative piece by ace journalist Anazarimi Yawanas to know what actually transpires in football administration in Ghana and the involvement of politicians in that. Like many Ghanaians, I'm excited and anxious to watch this video because of two reasons. Number one, because I am a football enthusiast and I believe you are too. As a matter of fact, Ghana is a football nation. We love football. But we've all be witnesses, been witnesses to the depreciation of the quality of our football. We've all be witnesses to how low our football has sunk to. And we know that that is accounted for by many factors. But one of those factors is as a result of the enormity of corruption involved in football administration in Ghana. Even though we know that that is one of the factors, you know, affecting Ghana's football. Mm. We've not had any concrete evidence, any hardcore evidence to buttress that. What we know still remains in the realm of perception and rumors. So I'm happy, and I would want to commend Anazari Miyawanas that once again, he has taken it upon himself to investigate some of these happenings in our football so that we can deal with those who are found culpable. We can weed out the bad news and stamp out the canker of corruption from Ghana's football to restore Ghana's football to its rightful place of pride. I'm very excited, and that is one of the reasons why I'll be going to the International Conference Center to watch this video documentary. Mm -hmm. The second reason why I'll be going to watch this has to do with how our president, our vice president, Dr. Bahumia, and leading members of this MPP government have been implicated in this new expose. From what you have seen? From what we have heard from the few privileged people who have had the benefit of watching SFs of this video documentary. I mean, we are told that in this video documentary, no less a person than the president of the Ghana Football Association, lawyer Kwesi Nyantichi, is caught on camera soliciting for money in the name of our president. A president whom we were told was incorruptible. So I would want to watch this Anas video and see what the president has been doing with his friends in secrecy. I would want to hear the verdict of Kwesi Nyantechi, who is a bosom friend of our president, about the integrity of our president and the kind of shady, phony deals which happens in secrecy. There are certain things flying around, in social, around I mean, on social media. 
Related One of to some of that, 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 that Mahama himself is said to have been given some <laughs> eight million. No, dollars. not at all. Not at well, all. Yeah, yeah. Not at well, all. Uh, that that uh, story. I, 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 you, yes, you, I'm asking you. you, you I'll come to you. I'll come to you. That I'll story. To that story. You, uh, that yeah. story. First of Relax. all, was published let me get a, by uh, Joy FM, mm. uh, based on extracts they are seen from the caution so, statement right. of Mr. Kwesi Nyantichi. Manasseh mm. Azure and key elements are joy of them yesterday on their evening even on their evening news bullets and they came out to clarify that what had been put out there was not the situation mm -hmm. and that whatever question Yantechi was told by the so-called investor friends actually came from the tiger pi undercover investigative team and these were things they told him just to bait him to get him talking mm -hmm. we know that you understand and and and, and it is clear i mean i've heard Kwekubaku speaking about it and they've all indicated that nowhere in that tape is President Mahama implicated. So this desperate attempt by our brothers to drag in President Mahama into this fiasco, into this scandal, will not wash. Ghanaians are descending. We know that this is a case of Kwesi Nyantechi, who is a bedfellow of the president, caught on tape soliciting for money in the name of the president. And why will he be doing so? The only reason why he will be doing so is because he knows that our president is open to influence and corruption. It is because that is what they do in secrecy. Today, you are going to see the kind of things Kwesi Nyantiji said about our president. How he sold his properties to win power. And how his no, brothers are on his neck. Video. Yes. And how his I brothers see. are on his neck for money. And how $5 million will be so helpful to him. You will see the kind of things that these people are doing into this country. How they are fleecing the state coffers. How they are planning to form companies to benefit from the yet to arrive 2 billion Chinese facility which they claim they will be using to build bridges you know, and dams in the northern region. You will see what they are doing. And, and, and after you watch it, you will come to the conclusion that Manessa Azuri came to just about two weeks ago that indeed we have elected for ourselves sophisticated thieves and charlatans. Mm. You see, what saddens me in this whole discussion has to do with the deliberate attack by some leading members of the New Patriotic Party, the ruling New Patriotic Party, to run down Mr. Anazari Miyawanas, to assassinate his character, to assail his hard-won reputation and integrity, to threaten his life, and to expose him to possible harm and death. That is what saddens me. Because we know the debilitating effect that the canker of corruption is having on us as a people. And we know how various state agencies which, wh whom we have entrusted with the responsibility to fight corruption, how they have failed us. And so if a patriotic citizen, a patriotic investigative journalist has taken upon himself to do some of these things, you just don't run him down just because he has implicated your president and his vice in his expose. You just don't do that. You're not, I'm you, not you, saying, I'm not you, by you, any you means suggesting that he's an angel. With, uh, the methods uh, he's using. Not at all. Okay. And, and it would be hypocritical for anybody in the new patriotic party to now suggest that Anas's method are bad. Why were we not in this country during the 2012 elections where the president went for the IEA debate and when he was asked about how he was going to combat corruption, how he told us that he was going to adopt the Anas method, Anas principle, mm. recruit young people, train them in undercover investigations for them to unearth corruption. When you wanted power, Anas was your hero. His methods were okay for you. Now that you are in power, and now that you have been exposed, you are all of a sudden finding problems yeah, wait, with this method. Let me tell you. We still remain there. Let me tell you. I am. Until we have seen the video and exactly. Oh, come on. I've seen snipers yeah, of the video. Okay. And if I know a lot of people who have also watched yeah, it. Okay. And so I know what I'm talking about. Okay. You see, we are not going to find out anything new. We are going to confirm what some of us have always believed about this government, what some of us have always known. But we never had evidence. You remember? Now, not, not too long ago, the other member of parliament, get ready to, to wrap up Kennedy and Japan, and came let me out, get Honorable uh, to, came out to tell us about how people at the presidency were extorting $20,000 to $30,000 from people who came to the Flagstaff House to see the president. He was asked to provide evidence. He was unable to provide the evidence. Now, thank God, Anas is giving us video evidence to confirm that. And you see, some people have suggested that, oh, we should take the utterances of Kwesi Nyantichi as a mere puff and that the man was bluffing. I say no, we can't do so. Because if you look at the pedigree of Kwesi Nyantichi, who he is, he is not somebody who will go out there and speak by heart.
we are talking about the president of the Ghana Football Association, a lawyer of many years standing, the president of WAFU, mm. the vice president of CAF, a member of FIFA's executive council, a bosom friend of the president, a financier of the president 2016 election campaign. He knows the president like a spam. So whatever he tells people who are posing as investors should not be taken lightly at all. Okay. It is revelatory and it shows the kind of things that our president and our vice president mm. are engaged in. And you see, what concerns me, and I think what should concern you, and finally. what should concern finally, finally, all our viewers, is that if what some of us are saying is true, and I know that it is indeed true, and you even see many more of that, then Ghana would have been reduced to an object of international ridicule and shame. And it will be very important for the people who have taken us that, you know, uh, path to wash their hands of government, resign, and allow people of integrity to take over the realms of I, this government. We grateful. cannot have people I'm like grateful. that, extortionists, you know, people who take I, bribes, grateful. corrupt people leading this country. I'm grateful. Uh, Honorable Hereford, so he said he's seen, uh, except of you, yes, and he sees these are issues that are likely to, to, to be seen, and that uh, there is nothing new, uh, issues that will be seen in the video or only a confirmation of perhaps what we have heard or been talking about these last few days. I am surprised that if anybody hmm. should talk about corrupt people, the NDC, and for that matter, a member of the NDC communication team will have the guest to talk about this. He mentioned that the president was implicated. The president was not implicated. Okay. He was not implicated. What the president did was that he demonstrated leadership. The president was given the opportunity to watch and accept of it. Mm. And what he saw prompted him that, look, if this is what is going to come up, then as the leader of this country, I have to take the bold steps. And for that matter, the president reported, uh, directed the CID to investigate the matter. I am surprised he's saying the president has been implicated. Implicated for what? It is question uh, who was caught in the vi video mm. using the name of the president to defraud people. Right. That was why the police invited him and cautioned him, charged him for for def defrauding, uh, defrauding by first patents. The president has not been implicated. So don't sit here and tell our viewers that the president has been implicated. Well, he has not been implicated. The video. And I yeah. am telling him that I have not seen the video. Okay. The public has not seen the video. What he is saying is his own concocted video that is telling Ghanaians. The All president right. has never been implicated in any way. So she's not sit here and tell people of this country that the president has been implicated. I am of the view that what, is, what we are going to see today, the story will tell itself. His former uh, 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 boss, that the former president of the Republic of Ghana, mm. John Bahama, has been in indicted. <laughs> it is on record that uh, okay. uh, 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 Kosi Yanchi gave NDC $8 million for their 2016 <laughs> election. What is, what is he saying about that? It's the same Kosi, the same Kosi Nyan, 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 Nyan Chichi, who he claims has implicated the president. Mm. The same person has also implicated the former, the former president, president of the Republic of Ghana. What did he say about that? If there's well, anything... He, he says the it, story is not true. So when it comes to NDC, it is not true. When it comes to MPP, you see how hypocritic people are. By, by 3 p.m., we'll, 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 we'll know that, the story. That is why I feel, so you go on. I feel that we have to tread with caution. Mm. Because if you don't have the facts as it is, you can you, you can perceive that what, what you are telling Ghanaians it, 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 it's nothing but, but first, the MPP as a party is not against the, 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 the modus operandi used by Anas. The fact that a member in the party has expressed an opinion does not suggest that the entire party is against it. Will it the, be the, good the, for the, the party you, you, to have coming. told the member to, to, to let, tread let, let, cautiously? Let me, let me, let, let me, let me finish. Mm. Yesterday, the majority leader spoke about this thing on City FM. He that represented the party? He, he spoke in his capacity as the majority leader. The vice president also spoke about it. So you realize that the, the, the party is not against the method used by Anas in extracting the, the, the information. Honorable Kennedy Japan is a member of a party. He has expressed his opinion 
about um, the, 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 the exposition. So you cannot use one person to generalize the, the, the whole Do party. Do you have he, a he, problem he, with Anasis Metal? I don't. Okay. I don't have a problem with it because, you see, this is not the, that is why I said this is not the first time that Anas has used this methodology to expose corrupt officials in this country. And, and on, on records, those exposés happen during your regime. So if you are talking about corrupt people, it is your government which is more corrupt. <laughs> it is during your regime that when Anas did the first exposé, the, the former uh, late uh, president saw it, he was fighting an alarm and had to rush to um, and Ghana, uh, 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 port, uh, 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 to see how things are going. So don't sit here and tell people you are telling, you see, you are telling Ghanaians that uh, in, in the video, um, uh, and Christian uh, Yantechi was telling how the president has sold his body. These are all fabricated lies. Look, what you have, what I have. What Ghanaians have at the end of the day, we'll see. We'll see. So it, don't sit here. How, how worried is the NPP that there seem to be a suggestion that the party is against Anas? No, that is a is perceived. The party worried? You see, it's a the perception. You see, the, that is why I said the party is not worried at all. It is a perceived propaganda by the NDC. Okay. We are not. We 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 are prepared. We are ready for the outcome of it. And to this morning, the former president, um, 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 President Ajitun Kufo, Kufo, also made a statement that at the end of the day, those found capable, those found um, uh, uh, guilty, should be dealt with. So if you're talking about corrupt people, <laughs> it is during oh, your right. regime, okay. during okay. your okay. regime, All right. when, when the, okay. the, 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 the president, okay. the, the former uh, president directed, so, some people saw the mess going on at uh, national, uh, the port. The port. The president stopped it. Hmm. The president, when he saw it, directed that the police service will investigate. So don't sit here and, 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 and throw dust into Ghana. The, the, the president has been implicated. The okay. president has never has been, not been implicated. Mm. We, 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 we wait to see. But, uh, Sammy, just, right. just one minute. No, no, no. I, I am, I am, I am he's, moving he's, on. This is second by the other. No, a lot but of time, just please. one minute. I'm moving no, on. He's had a lot of right, time. Right, I, I, I'm moving right, on. Please. You okay. See, so, you Sammy, just one minute. Go on. I'll move on. No, please, I beg you. It's important for us to lay this matter to rest. This yeah, matter, but you see, because we're going to watch the no, video, it's, it's yes, that you, you know, have no, anything against, no, against no, what you have to video. Just clarify. No, we, are we, are about, we are talking about joy. So, so if you have anything no, that please, you see, right, you want take to clarify, your time. Do it and then right, take let's your time. move on. Because he's right. made specific allegations against the former president. And that You have not made an You have not made an allegation against the current president. No, you see. Let, 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 let gentlemen, to, to have your uh, I want right. us to have a beautiful conversation this exactly. morning. Now, Daily Guy has the story of uh, the uh, 8 million NDC cash. So that, that is today. what I am now, responding to. Now, because we don't have the full fact, he's made his point. He said that he thinks the former president is implicated. You said the current president is implicated. Now, clarify anything in just a minute. Let's move on. And we have seen the video. 3 p.m. and then right. we can we can make that is exactly comment. what I'm about okay, to so do. Okay, so go on. We know that that story was broke by Joy FM. Mm. This here, what I have here, the Facebook post of Manessa Azuri on which, his Facebook which, which, yesterday, which, yes, right. Where he said, understanding the Mahama angle of the story, the investors claim that they gave money in the past to government officials. Nyantechi writes that in his statement to the CID. Now we know they were not investors; they were Tiger PI's team. They just posed and said what they said to beat Nyantechi to get him talking. We know they are fake investors. And what they said to Nyantechi was fake. So this means they did not give any money to John Mama or his campaign team. This is coming from Manase Azuri. Now, so th th this whole belated, you know, attempts at equalization what, what is will not work. That is the first what point. What is the belated? Now, 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 when you are lying, you are lying, you disagree, I'll get to know now, when you are lying. He, 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 he denies the fact that the president has been implicated in this video. He said he's and, not. And in the same vein, he says that the press, somebody was using the name of the president to solicit for money, for which reason the president has reported him to the police. So which is which? Okay. It means that the president has been implicated by his friend. Oh, okay. The point I'm All making right. here is that Kennedy Japan has told the, the people of Ghana. We are not discussing about 
honorable uh, please can i have a when we were talking i was sitting here quietly right you cannot say that because you are not you are allowed to land don't do that and then i come to you to clarify you see kerege japan told us that after let's wrap up after mr kwesi nyantechi had that encounter with the police officer that's what i said 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 that's what who were posing as business investors and all that. He followed his promises and his representations with concrete steps. He came into the country, met with Cabo, sought an appointment with the president. He flown the president of Liberia to Dubai. These are all things which are already in the public domain. Oh, well, he where, flown where, 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 where did, Cabo where, where to Dubai to meet these people. Okay. Listen, where did you get this information? Listen, just to conclude, let me just conclude by saying this. You see, you don't have the information. Just where, did you, where did you get Horrible. this information? Yes. Sami, yes, conclude. Just for the records, uh -huh. never it, in this it. country, listen, the people of Ghana will see the content of that video, so I will not believe that the point. But exactly I want to the point I have. But I want to say you by saying this. Allow me to conclude. You don't have the fact. Wrap up. Why are you sweating like this? I am not. I am not. Because of the fact that Sami, please wrap up. But I cannot wrap up in a mess. No, no, no. Wait for it. If you allow him to wrap up, we make progress. Refer to me on wrap up. Okay. Sami, please wrap up for it. You see, you people have been caught pants down. <laughs> no, there is. Your you see, that is why. That up is why. No, I'm wrapping up for you. Okay, I'm you wrapping say, up for you. You see, you. I have to. Uh, you also give me time. Oh, to wrap okay. I, I this is not how we do uh, the, the program, please. Ah. Oh, no, I'm begging you. I'm Sammy, begging Sammy, you. You are, are not handling the program. You are my senior brother. No, please wrap up for me. You see, the point I am making here is that. That's 10 seconds. The point I'm making here is that never in the history of this country have we seen this unbridled pension for corruption. From Metro Mass. To national health insurance, oh, okay. oh, all, all right. across all the state institutions, uh, okay. we are seeing how okay. government officials are fleecing the state coffers. Their own deputy general secretary is saying that what is happening is called grabbing, grabbing. The sheer greed of government officials. Okay, Sabi, I am grateful. And looting the state coffers. I, 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 I am grateful. I don't know why you sit on television and say to equalize. Thirty seconds. Sabi, then please allow him to wrap up. Please uh, wrap up again. Yeah, he's wrapping up. You see, I can see you are sympathizing with him. No, no, no. That is why you are being over. Really generous with your no, time no, no, allocation, no, no, no. but okay. no amount of time uh, uh, Sabi, can please. save Sabi, the situation. You are out of order. No please. amount of time allow, can allow save him. To wrap up. Please, oh, uh, you want to be up. allowed? Like you allowed? Please, me. please wrap up. He wants to be allowed. I, I am sorry. The man is confused. You he see, can't even you talk. See, he you are right. totally when, 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 when we talk he about totally corruption, he is totally befuddled by the alarming levels he, of corruption he, he in this government. He is forgotten about the Sada. He is talking about. He is for, forgotten Ooh, about the past. You are in government. Is it it doesn't lie in your mouth. Okay, okay. all right. Then I, I am moving on. Okay. Then I, I, gentlemen, I am moving on. I am moving on, please. You see, I am moving on. I am moving on. Please, I am moving on. Gentlemen, I am grateful. Now, let me jump to the Ghanaian Times this morning. Except right. you want to wrap up and wrap up. Wrap up. If you throw any other allegation, I Wrap up. Wrap up. It would be unfair mm. for Sami mm -hmm. to tell Ghanaians that the, the president has been implicated. Okay. So when when, 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 and, and for that matter, the NDC has a party. It is a lie. Okay. This is the question that is, it is on you record. The of so Ghana's this is your record. That he lived the GFA experience hell under John okay. Hammer. All right. They let said me, they went to right. hell. Right. Are you talking let about me the break? Let me take a break. When I am back, I am going to discuss the Ghanaian time this morning. The majority and minority are locked up over how much Ghana is owing as dead. Stay with us. We'll be back in a second. All right, and welcome back to the show. Now, uh, the uh, analysis number 12 uh, caused a stare when uh, Media House decided to show some photographs of uh, the person of uh, Anas. Uh, the motive was to uh, demystify the man there. Uh, a photograph of one guy who was shown uh, was said to be Anas, but that was in the case. Now, he's not been too happy with it. Now, uh, let's listen to what he said when he saw his photograph as that of an ass. This morning I woke up, I got called by my friend from Ghana. He said, Patrick, you're world famous in Ghana. I say, world famous in Ghana? I've never been to Ghana. He said, yeah, uh, you're all over the news. You know, I thought like maybe some modeling or whatever, something that ended up in. No. He told me that apparently there is this guy in Ghana that is called Anas. He goes by the name of Anas. He's a, he's a journalist, and he's always undercover, and right now um, he's always exposing 
people that are into corruption and whatever not. This Kennedy, he has put out the, the word that he found Anas. He revealing, he revealing the face of Anas. What did he do? He went on the internet and put in man with locks or whatever. I don't know what he put in there, but he came up with my picture and put up my picture and showed to the whole country of Ghana that I am Anas. Listen, i never been to Ghana. How can I be? I'm not affiliated with no political parties. I don't like politics. I don't like go I, all of them things. I don't like it. Right now, because of this whole shit, my whole career is in danger. About to make some big steps, and these guys are just freaking around with my pictures and whatever not. One more time, to all the people of Ghana, I am not Anas, I am Patrick Marcelino. All right, uh, Patrick Marcelino is a Brazilian actor and model. He just uh, joined me via Skype. Uh, Patrick, uh, you are in the Caribbean. Uh, it's morning in uh, Accra. Uh, what is the time yeah. there? Yeah, over here it's 3.30, 3.30 a.m. Right. I um, just woke up just to talk to you. So Great, <laughs> great. Thanks so much for your time. It's the morning. Now, so this has indeed affected your career. That's what you're saying. Well, it's, it's like I, I, I've been the face of many brands for, for a while. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm becoming the face of a new beer brand, which I cannot call the name of, big international beer brand. And many other things that are coming up for me uh, at, this po at this moment, about to make a movie and whatever not. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of jeopardizing because companies can pull themselves back and say like, okay, you are affiliated now with all kind of political situations, so we have to pull ourselves back and you cannot be the face anymore. You know, these kind of things. And also because of the music that I'm doing, uh, yeah, and that, that, you know, it's, it's just a, basically a lot of things. You have not been to Ghana before? i never been to Ghana before in my life. i never been to Africa. It always has my biggest dream to go back uh, to 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 go to Africa, live in Africa, you know, build build a family in Africa, teach the youth my skills and expertise, and share whatever I can do and whatever not. Um, but yeah, at this point, you know, like hearing whatever was going on, it made me feel like, hey, is it still safe for me to go to Ghana right now? You know, because if people would see me as a Nazi, you know, people people could do something to me or whatever not. Um, yeah. Have you, since you you were told that you are uh, on social media in Ghana, on TV in Ghana, have you attempted any contact here in Ghana to speak to anybody? Um, yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I've been in contact with, uh, with, uh, with an artist that I've already been planning on um, making a movie with and also uh, recording an album called The Aja. Um, yeah, he basically keeping me updated on everything that is going on, you know, because we was already speaking before and this and that. So, yeah, he, he keeps me updated on whatever happening and going on because I don't know too many people in, in, in Ghana. And, yeah, so I have to hear it from the people that live there, people on social media that are hitting me up right now and telling me the situations. If you said what you, you saw, your photographs, your pictures, uh, put out here, mm -hmm. is, is worrying. Uh, is there any action you're thinking of, of taking to reverse this? Yeah, well, definitely, definitely. At this point, um, I have put a, a team of lawyers together from Holland, New York, and Ghana itself, uh, who are right now really investigating what the situation really is. Because at the end of the day, you know, even though... Uh, the word is that it's Kennedy uh, Agapong that has been putting this out. I still have to investigate it because people cannot be accused uh, falsely. And But at the end of the day, whatever will come out, the people that will get sued will not like it. So you're threatening a legal action, that's it? Definitely, definitely. This is not the first time that this has happened in my life. I mean, there are many companies and brands that have been using my face um, for their own propaganda. Patrick uh, Marcelino is a Brazilian actor, a model, uh, talking to me about uh, his uh, photograph that was used uh, 
said to be that of NASA. There's more of this on 3 News. We'll, we'll tell you more about that. Let me come back to the studio. And uh, we, we're not going back to NAS because we have to take a look at what happened in Parliament yesterday. The, the Ghanaian Times has the story, majority, minority, lock horns on state of countries debt portfolio. The story is suggesting that uh, uh, the majority minority caucuses of Palu yesterday locked horns over the true state of the country's debt portfolio as the battle for supremacy in economic management continues. Now, whilst the minority argued the current government added 28 billion cities to the debt stock uh, last year, majority maintained only 20 billion was added to the total debt of the country. And uh, that's it. Uh, let me quickly start this conversation. I don't for you were in, in Parliament uh, yesterday. This issue of debt. Um, is the minority's argument legitimate, asking that the, the majority should tell how much the, the debt they have added on and what that, that money has been used for? Um, well, <coughs> I, I was not in Parliament yesterday, oh, you were not in but Parliament yesterday. The, okay. the, the little, I, the briefing I had, I, I think the, the majority leader raised the issue that is a, there's a need to have a committee on the economy mm. so that the committee can be, be able to tell the rare or the actual debt stock of the country. Whilst the, the minority are saying our, our, our debt stock has risen by 28 million. Right, 28 uh, billion. 28 billion. We, on the majority, are saying only 20 uh, billion. billion. The, the, if you look at uh, the report which was... Um, issued out on Parliament on uh, Ghana debt stock, you realize that the debt stock which has been added on to the existing one which we came to meet in 2016 mm. was 20 billion, not um, 28, billion. 28 billion. So there was a uh, uh, give and take. This mi minority saying that uh, what the figures we gave out was not the accurate information. The, the majority side was able to prove that what we, we had was the, the exact reality on the ground. So at the end of the day, uh, one is not able to tell what the exact story is, but what the ma I, once I am from the majority mm. side, what the figures from the, the Ministry of Finance uh, has is what the majority put out. So there is always that every time, because the, the minority are always on the mi minority side, whatever comes out which is untrue, uh, they, 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 they want to make a, a case of, out of it. So I believe that, like what the majority leader just indicated, when we have a committee, uh, uh, comprises both the minority and the majority, mm. the committee will always sit, analyze the debt profile, use the indicators, how the, 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 the debts are accumulated, how they, 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 they are expended, the projects that those debts that have been um, um, borrowed have been um, accounted for. And when we do it on the commit, uh, committee level, I think both parties should be able to have a fair and a, a final decision as to the, Z, uh, the, the, the exact debt provider. So when it comes to the, the House for discussion, uh, what happened yesterday in Parliament, uh, I think, uh, was a difference. So, so I, I believe that, that the report the, that was given out indicated um, how much was added to the debt? So, so I, I think the best thing is to um, get that committee, committee in place to, so to that the figure is the agreed figure as, as between the two would, would always be the finality mm. and not minority saying this, majority also saying a different story. Uh, Sami, the, the, the minority seem not to agree that uh, the, the figure the, that is being uh, talked about is the right one. 20 billion cities added in 2017. Minority said 28 billion. And he is suggesting that perhaps a committee should sit down and be able to agree on, on a figure instead of the, both sides having uh, their own figures. Thank you, brother. I just have uh, three things to say about mm. this issue. Mm. The first is that if you look at the facts on the ground, you will agree with the minority that indeed the total amount of money that this government borrowed in the 2017 fiscal year is $28 billion and not $20 billion. The cities. C cities. The, the Times yes, said cities. cities. I have looked at the figures, okay, and it is clear that the 4.7 billion Ghana cities that this government took in energy bonds, mm. which it guaranteed with the ESLA, has not been captured as part of the $20 billion they are talking about. But we know that that bond is a public debt because the receivables for that bond 
are the taxes of Ghanaians, specifically the energy sector levies. So you, okay? so you don't so agree when they said that it is uh, uh, monies that are going to SOEs and so we can't, we can't capture them? No, the debt. bottom line here is that the government of Ghana has guaranteed that okay. it is going to pay the money. Okay. And the government of Ghana has collateralized the taxes of Ghanaians. And so once you have done that, you cannot come back again and say that it's not a public debt. Okay. When you add that to it, and you add the capital UT bank bonds to it, it gives you a total of 28 mm -hmm. billion. But you see, our brothers can play gymnastics and acrobatics with these debt figures. What is important for the Ghanaian who is watching us this morning, that takes me to my second point, mm -hmm. has to do with the hypocrisy they are exhibiting in this matter. Because we know what they said to us when they were in opposition. They criminalized borrowing. They called us names. They labeled us as lazy no, just that because we're borrowing. The subject of they said the borrowing, the we are discussing the, the, the national debt stock. And you don't tell me what to say. We don't be respectful. You don't tell me how to do my analysis. You don't tell me what to say. Please, 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 he has worked at the Bank of Ghana before and he knows that we can harness our resources to develop our country. We don't have to borrow. And today you are not ashamed. You are sitting on national television telling Ghana that you have borrowed 20 billion Ghana cities in just one year. Just one year. You've not even added your 2018 figures to it. Now, thirdly, they should tell us what they have used that money for. Because we in the NDC maintain that borrowing per se is not bad. But it is what you use that money for, which is an issue. If you borrow, for self-financing projects, projects which can pay for themselves, projects which can create jobs and expand for the economy, then you're on the right path. But with all the monies they've borrowed, 20 billion in just one year, they cannot pinpoint to any school they are building, any road they are constructing. The one district, one factory they spoke about, we are not seeing it, we are not seeing the dams. So what are they using the money for? The, there the, is nothing to show the, for what Dr. they're doing. Dr. Mark Esbiabwa says that, I mean, these uh, monies have been used to reprofile the debt that the previous You cannot be profile, reprofiling your debt, and yet your debt stock will be rising from 122 billion to 150 billion. If you are borrowing to pay your debts, why is your debt stock rising at that alarming rate? He should spare us that. You understand? And what he's telling you should tell you that they are borrowing for consumption. They borrow to chop. They don't borrow for any infrastructural projects which can transform this economy and improve the livelihoods of the people of Ghana. We borrowed 86 billion within our eight-year period. 86 billion cities. They have borrowed just 20 billion in just 2017. Now, with our 86, 86 billion, mm. I can right now, on top of my head, tell you about the myriad of projects that we use the money for. The Kaswa Interchange, the Ridge Hospital, the Legon Hospital, the Circle Interchange, the Tema Harbor Expansion Project, the Takwadi Expansion Project, which alone created over 6,000 direct uh, and indirect jobs. You understand the airport, the Kutoka Airport Expansion Projects, and all these concrete, physical, tangible projects that we use the money for. You have borrowed 20 billion. Tell me, tell me, any KVIP toilet, excuse my language, any classroom block, any road, any hospital, any self-financing project that you are using that money for. Let we borrowed for the $850 million gas project at Etuyabo. Mm. Look at the enormity, the enormous benefits that we are deriving from that project today. That is what we call foresight. That is what we call visionary leadership. Okay. You so don't we, borrow to only to spend the money on consumption. And just to wrap up, you see, I spoke no, about I, the I, I didn't want, no, to, I didn't want to wrap up because I'm coming back okay. to you. Now, another way for Now, this issue of uh, uh, loans contracted for SOEs, which are added to uh, government uh, debt, the my, minority is saying that. I mean, SOEs can take them, but it is government that is perhaps uh, taking them, and so we can still add it. You agree? Yes. So we should, it, it, it shouldn't be part of public debt because they are contracted for SOEs, state-owned enterprises. You see, yesterday um, I am told mm -hmm. that um, the, 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 final, uh, the finance committee chairman was raising Dr. an issue, uh, uh, um, issue that there is a need even to uh, invite the SOEs chief executives to come to the floor of the house and explain how this money is this money are being managed mm. at the uh, SOEs. I believe that the borrowing that he is saying that w when we came to power, we have not done any single physical infrastructure. I am surprised he's sitting and saying this thing. I, 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 I'm, I'm surprised. Look, we've, we've been in power for almost 80 months. Right. The debt that we came to, to meet, mm. obviously we need to pay. How mm. do we service those debts? 
So the borrowing is to service the debt. It is not only to service debt. We 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 reprofile the, the, the debt to give more space so that we can use m m most of the money to pay some of the, the debt we left. We 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 embark on infrastructure project. You know, obviously, when we embark on infrastructure project, it takes time for people to see the physical project um, that you are embarking upon. Mm. We we have started the the the, the uh, one constituency um, water water uh, uh, bottles. We, we we are doing um, a toilet for the the, the communities. W um, the the one constituency one dam in the northern region has started. So what is he talking about? Most of the, 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 the projects that you, you borrowed, you didn't pay for. Most of the contracts were signed at the apex of the, the, the election. At the end of the day, we cannot abrogate those contracts. We have to uh, uh, do value for money analysis and see the ones which are uh, needs to be paid. Or how do we pay those monies? So don't sit here and tell us that you did project. Every government does project. Right. You, you were in power for eight years, so the project that you did, let us assess the number of years we have been to power. When we equate it, at the end of the day, we see which government has done projects. Right. Every government is voted to power to do projects. So when you are talking of projects, it is a non-starter. What we have started, because we, we they, they, they are in, in the starting process, you not see it. But come the end of the year, you should we should be able to tell Ghanaians that the one district, one factory that is talking, as, as we speak, go to a confi and see the physical structures are there. They, right. they, 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 right they, they have started the, yeah. the, 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 the plantations. Have been planted. We, we don't want to build factories where we can't have raw materials to, to run the factories. Everything that takes time, it, it is useful. So don't sit here and say that when we can, we've not done any single project. Fine. You you will say it for now, but at the end of the day, the debt that you left is a matter of concern. Ghanaians should be raised. Okay. The 1.2 billion debt that you left for national health insurance, ask how were we, were we able to pay? Oh. These are matters you need to sit down uh, and find out. So uh, I am saying that so far as our debt is concerned, we had 20 billion, so not, 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 not 20 billion. billion. Okay, as right. this is okay. Uh, uh, Sabi, I'll be very quick. Me. Number one, you have if to you say that you're borrowing for SOEs, you need to give us specifics. Which SOEs? You cannot just make that blank and speak a statement and go. Number two, you cannot tell us that 18 months is too short a period for we to demand accountability from you. Because I'm your president... You, I'm not saying... Yes, 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 yes fine. But yes, 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 your president... Yes promised the people of Ghana that he was going to transform Ghana within 18 months if voted for. Number two, he it is a shame that, that the that only way. thing you can talk about are borrowing and waste. I wanted us to talk about our female entrepreneurs. Where did the president go? He's always indicting the president for things he hasn't said. My brother, you sat here and said that you started constructing toilets. Yes. You started constructing bowls with 20 billion Ghana cities. That is what you can talk about. It's a shame. Now, my brother, please. Gentlemen, I am great. Right, right. Right, let me wrap up. Unfortunately, just it's fine. Unfortunately, we, we have to wrap up business. this morning. I, I, I wish we could talk about boost for female entrepreneurs. I know, but let me wrap up. In, in all fairness no. to me, you know, I just needed to make the point that it is a lie that this government has paid off the NHIS debt we left. It, it, that is why the service paid. providers are it, complaining. It, it and you are not the only government which inherited debt. When we came to I, power I, in 2009, we inherited the 750 million US dollars you are taking through euro bonds. We you service those loans and we pay for it. The truth, the truth okay, tell us one project you use your money for, apart from toilets and boho. Tell us. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I am grateful for your time with tell us. us uh, we, 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 we ran out of time. Samid oh, Yemfi is a member of the NDC's team. Uh, Honorable Ekwa Hayford is the MP for Infantiment, a member of the NPP. Stay right here. There is more coming up on the show. Have a good morning once again. Well, a happy birthday to Esther Amoko Lai. She's the sister-in-law of our sweet makeup artist here, Thelma Lai. And happy birthday to Mr. Philip Kotu, the administrator for Achimota Hospital. May God bless you all. But let's delve into having a discussion concerning the skills and technology fair. And joining me in studio to discuss this, I have Dr. Joseph Amwakun. He's the deputy director for Radiation Protection Institute. Also, Mr. Danwell Eko Eku. He's the deputy fund manager for the skills development fund and then finally mr fred mauli debi he's the managing partner for heal the world good morning gentlemen and welcome to tv3 new day good morning, good morning.
So let's delve right into it. I'll start with you, Mr. Eku, because you are the Deputy Fund Manager for the Skills Development yeah. Fund. Help us understand exactly what the Skills Development Fund is and why it was instituted in the All first right. place. Well, it's targeted at enterprises and institutions. Uh, basically, so that our enterprises and the workforce that work in them can be perform better. Mm. So the fund is being given out to be given to the enterprises mm -hmm. and the institutions to improve the skills of their workforce mm -hmm. uh, and thereby improving their productivity. Oh. But as you can see, all the individual enterprises that apply, if they do so and their pro productivities are out, collectively as a nation, okay. our competitiveness also improves right. because we are in this thing with other companies from other nations and so on who are competing with us. Very okay, well. So, mm. Yeah, so they came, they, they, uh, the enterprises like Mr. Uh, Fred Digby, uh, they apply and come along with service providers who offer them the training. Okay. So we have the uh, Radiation Protection uh, Institute as a kind of a service provider, mm. okay, and then he as an entrepreneur who apply for the fund mm. and uh, we work together all towards uh, engendering uh, our national productivity. Okay, I'd like you to go back and try and clarify for me. So when you say they come along with their skills provider or service provider, yes. does it mean the entrepreneur who applies will choose a group that they want them to, you know, empower them or give them some skills and come together to apply for the firm? Uh, exactly. Okay. He, as an entrepreneur, knows what, what is his wants. need right. and the kind of training he's looking okay. for. So he's giving the latitude to look for mm. uh, that service provider, that training service provider within the Ghanaian environment or mm. elsewhere mm. Uh, who can offer that, that training. So okay. the, the, the prerogative is, is theirs to do so. Very well. So also then that brings to play the role of the Institute of Radiation. What exactly is your mandate in this fund? Yeah, um, our mandate as an institution uh, which is part of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission um, we are a research institution and a technical service provider. Mm. We provide training and specifically on occupational radiation protection. Right. And usually our target groups have been um, those who work with ionizing radiation in the mines and then also non-ionizing, the mobile phone companies, mm. um, uh, the various companies, uh, hospital like Ghana Health Service, the radiographers, etc. These are some of the people that we normally train right. on occupational radiation protection. Okay, so I'll come back to you. But Fred, you are a beneficiary. So tell me how it was going through the process of applying for the fund. Is it easily accessible and how good was it for you? Um, thank you very much. Um, I have actually been very impressed with the process. Okay. Um, I, a friend of mine who is also uh, into garment manufacturing, mm -hmm recommended it to me after he was a beneficiary. He said, bro, you have to apply mm -hmm. for this because you are doing something good, but we all need to take it to the next level. Yeah. So there was um, a call, I think it was out in the newspapers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They give you a deadline, and um, the first part of the process is very simple. It's more or less an overview of your business and your needs. Once they believe that what you are doing is viable, mm -hmm. you take it to the next step where the, you can go in for business, uh, business plan, training sessions, mm -hmm. and so on. They also equip you with so many different consultants wow. to help you to construct your paper together mm -hmm. so that it's something that they can approve and then uh, help you out with funding. So I've actually been very impressed. They've been very transparent. They have been very understanding okay. of the um, SMEs and companies mm -hmm. they are working with. I believe they have even extended deadlines more than once just so that people are able to access the funds. Right. So I've been very impressed with SDF so far. Okay, but I'm sure people out there who are in the same position as you are are wondering what challenges did your company have for which you thought SDF will be able to help you? Well, um, Heal the World has been making high-end shoes and leather accessories for mm. close to 10 years now. I started off as a banker not knowing much about the shoe industry or manufacturing. Yeah. So I've had to find out and experiment over time. Wow. But what, skills, what SDF does is that it allows anyone in a particular industry to find a service provider 
that reach, reaches the skill requirements needed for their company. Right. Well, after having a discussion with a fellow service provider, mm -hmm. you come up with an MOU, a bill, and so on, and put all that together in, in a proposal. Mm -hmm. That's when SDF can see that you, are, you, are, you have shown initiative to start a company, mm -hmm. you have found someone who can help you take it to the next level, and SDF does the rest for you. Very well. I'll be coming back to you, Mr. Ikun, because right. you are the fan manager, and so you have all the answers. Mm -hmm. But let me come also to the Radiation Protection Institute. What exactly would you be using the SDF to do? Yes, um, our one of the major constraints had been funding. Okay. Um, even though we've been offering training, uh, our scope has been mm -hmm. narrow. I think this funding is going to enable us to expand, to reach out. You know, developing training models uh, is a special skill, mm. and you need to produce dead content mm. uh, as well as the delivery. Yeah. And it's, it can be, training can be very expensive, uh, especially when it comes to uh, specialized areas mm. like this. So this funding is going to enable us to develop the models and the manuals as well as acquire a few uh, training kits uh, so that we can reach out to a larger group of people. Very well. So, Mr. Eku, for you, yes. moving forward or over the years when this SDF was planned, it had a goal. Do you think you are gradually achieving that goal or that aim that it was set up for? Exactly. We, we have. Uh, in, the, in the first phase, we um, gave funding to over 600 uh, individual grants. Nice. That touched 43,000 enterprises, okay, all over Ghana, all the 10 regions. Uh, the core indicator we were looking at was the productivity. Right. That has improved uh, up to 60.4% across board, year on year, okay. uh, which means that the companies, um, if they were doing two pieces a day by one worker now, Perhaps they are doing six or even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a way of bringing their costs down and, and, and it makes them more competitive. So this, this is what has happened. And it is on the back of this success mm -hmm. that uh, Danida, the, the, the funding sources, extended it into the phase that we currently are operating right. uh, so that we can now look at the agro uh, processing sectors. Mm -hmm. We can look at the renewable energy sectors yes. um, among the others such as such as him right. but let me let me put put this thing across it's it's interesting unwittingly mm -hmm. i have managed to bring uh the two of them together because mm -hmm. what you see here is a kind of a shoe yeah. that he would demand that enterprises that deal with radiation would wear have. that to protect them mm. and other other sectors he is a, a manufacturer of shoes and I'm sure after this, they'll get together and talk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they'll get together. So, so this, is, this, is, this is what we, we are, we're getting results. Mm. And um, uh, we believe that if we stay the course, uh, we'll be competitive as a nation and um, uh, everybody will be the better for it. Very okay. well. But finally, I'd like you to talk about, Fred mentioned the transparency of the process, yes. but also many times when these funds are set up, what people have issues with is the fact that it doesn't seem to be equally distributed across the country. And so you have people in the cities benefiting more than people in the rural areas. Is this the situation for the SDF? Uh, not, not, not really so, because uh, it, is, it is targeted at all the 10 regions. Okay. And in our outreach, mm. we actually went from region to region and meet the apart from the the media media blitz we also go face to face okay. uh with the prospective applicants right. in the regions right. and uh but because it's a it's a demand driven uh, uh, fund we we mm. call it a a, a demand driven fund because okay. uh, we put the, the the advert out there and encourage you as much as but you need to apply right. and uh, so what we would do is to make sure that the news is all over the place well. and then the enterprises can apply but finally, maybe from Fred, I want to find out what is your expected result from this grant as a company? Um, we've done well uh, to build a brand. Okay. And as a brand that is trusted, it allows us to do more products. Okay. Now, this fund allows us to then do research and development, mm -hmm. product development on new products that we can bring to our brand, mm -hmm. as well as hire new people in at the same time right. so that we can have um, 
intentional training sessions. You know, I've applied to do training for about two to three months, mm -hmm. and craftsmanship takes a lot of time. So, and time takes money. You know, anything that takes time mm -hmm. takes money. So, SDF allows gives us the freedom of learning mm -hmm. on the job, without actually incurring a, a, a business loss as mm -hmm. well. So, I'm like I said earlier, I'm impressed with what mm -hmm. they are doing, and um, they've been very understanding to. Um, everyone's particular needs, you know, they, they, regardless of the industry. Very well. Dr. Marco, for you, from your, you know, institutes, will this grant see a change in the face of how you work or how you interact with citizenry to benefit us as well? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, in the past, our training schedules and activity has focused mainly on energy and radiation. Right. Uh, this time around, I think with the funding, we are expanding the scope okay. for, to cover uh, non ionizing like mobile phone, telephony, microwave, antennas. So, engineers, technicians mm. uh, who repair these things mm. uh, are going to be trained on safety okay. because conventionally, uh, occupational health and safety has um, usually focused on a narrow area like fire, mm -hmm. chemicals, etc. But when it comes to radiation, you can it's see, you can feel, mm -hmm. and if there's a problem, uh, you only walk into it before right. um, uh, anybody realizes. So safety in radiation is very, very key, mm. uh, especially when it comes to uh, our country, because yeah. the use of radiation sources uh, is all over mm -hmm. the place. Uh -huh. Very well. Finally, from you, Deputy Fund Manager, yeah. what, when is the event? What are you going to be showcasing on that particular day yeah. as well? So we're bringing together about 40 mm -hmm. enterprises and institutions who benefited from the fund from the 20th uh, to 21st of this, this month mm -hmm. at the Aliza, Aliza Hotel. Um, they will come from the agro, agro processing sector. Mm -hmm. They will come from other manufacturing uh, sector, food, food, food product, mm -hmm. uh, furniture, uh, electronics, uh, name it. And that's why... He's talking about radiation mm -hmm. there. Uh, all of them uh, 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 will showcase what they have, and it's an opportunity for them to network, uh, but also for us that people get to see what we're mm -hmm. doing and the results that we've chalked over the period. And also, in the same vein, launch our next call mm -hmm. uh, for proposals, uh, which is happening right after the fair, okay. uh, uh, and so that people can get to know. So. All right. So on that note, the fourth skills and technology fair is about happening. And of course, everyone wants to go there to see what the skills development fund has been used for. And the beneficiaries can also tell you a thing or two about how to get in contact with people. So your business grows out there. But I have been speaking to Fred Mauli Debe. He is the managing partner for Hugh the World. And he has been a beneficiary from the skills development fund. I also had Mr. Daniel Eko Eku. He's the deputy fund manager for skills development fund. And finally, Dr. Joseph Amwako. He is the Deputy Director for Radiation Protection Institute of Gaiek. On that note, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more here on New Day. Sixteenth June will be Father's Day. If you haven't bought a copy of the uh, Junior Graphic yet, go out there and get a copy of it. Because the Three uh, FM, the Mirror, and uh, I Can Innovations are putting together a very special Father's Day package. Now, if you buy the Junior Graphic today, turn to page seven wherever you are in Ghana, tear that part out, write a memo to your dad. Okay, so you can buy for your children to write a nice memo to you. Drop it over at Three FM at the Sawe Kanda TV Three or at the graphic offices across the nation. And guess what? You stand a chance of winning something special. We all will meet at the uh, Osu Children's Home and we'll have a big fat family party there. But the Ashanti Professionals Club is up in the trends again. I've been joined by Vice President Vincent from Port Menu. Vincent, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Nice one. Sure. So the, the Ashanti Professionals Club, what exactly is it? It's just um, a group of um, professionals that I mean, who hail from Asante region, who are doing various um, professional activities across the country and abroad, mm. and we have thought it wise to come together and um, give back to to Asante man mm. and. A sentiment transcends um, um, Ashanti region in right. political sense. Mm. Um, so the Asante kingdom in general. Mm. So 
we we are just to um, support each other and ensure that as professionals mm -hmm. um, we have to support development of Asante Man mm -hmm. and Ghana in general. I see. So that's why. So we so who can join? Is it uh, by those who are you know originally Asante's consanguines or <laughs> <laughs> from from Asante Man? Um, um, biologically, I mean. That is the primary right. affinity. Okay. So biologically, anybody, at least a parent, a biological parent okay. from Ashanti region. But you know that Ashanti man is big right. and it has um, um, people, I mean, usually people say Kumasianos. Mm. And you have a lot of people who are not typically or biologically Ashantis mm. who are doing so many things. In our um, operational arrangement, we have associates and honorary members mm. that opens the space for them to be associated right. with us and do mm. um, development is bringing so many mm. people to pursue it. So we are open to everybody coming in mm. apart from the primary membership mm. that um, levels are well, there. What do you say to uh, you know the concerns raised by some sections of the public that this may be ethnocentric, tribalistic, and have the potential of, if you will, dividing the country. What do you say to that? Actually, it is to dispel these kind of notions that we, we have come together to do this. Okay. We think that if every region, people who are well-to-do, people mm -hmm. who are doing well, mm -hmm. people who can serve as role models right. are to come together mm -hmm. and support government, whichever government is in power, mm -hmm. to pursue development activities, it will go a long way to ensure mm -hmm. that socioeconomic welfare of our people are built okay. and developed. Mm -hmm. And so it is not tribalistic, it is not discriminatory, Okay. It is a development agenda mm. of professionals, like-minded people mm. who are here to, to support. So mm. we have our brothers in, in Co, for example, okay. coming together. Right. We have people from other regions coming together. Mm. It could be women coming together. It could be Christians coming right. together. It could be Muslims coming together. Mm. It's all about what can we do at every point in okay. time to ensure. What, when you say professionals, what are you talking, are you talking about? Persons who have the book knowledge, so lawyers, uh -huh. doctors, architects, engineers, journalists, or you're talking about the fitter, the plumber, the mason, what are we talking about? Somebody may be a mason, but that's his profession. Right. Once he's formally trained and get paid for what he does, he's a professional I see. and he can join he us. He can join us. Okay, so the, there's a public lecture coming up. You're looking at the role of chieftains in a modern governance and democracy. Uh, give me a brief then we talk, we'll talk about the venue as well. Right. So um, in this modern day or modern Ghana, as we say, um, we sometimes are, I mean, going or leaving our nativity, mm -hmm. our culture mm -hmm. and our cultural heritage behind. And so we think that as professionals, sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, people travel abroad, people learn okay. up to tertiary level, and they forget mm -hmm. that they are really Asantis or Bonos or um, 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 Everest, okay, and they forget about the, the essence of language. Mm. And so this is um, a platform to provide um, an opportunity for astute um, people mm -hmm. in society okay. to educate the general public about mm -hmm. the need that we cannot um, go under the cover of uh, modern Ghanaism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and forget about who we are okay and language is critical, critical. aspect of mm -hmm. who we are mm -hmm. and so we want to use this pr platform to educate people about the need to educate our children it's happening tomorrow it's happening where, tomorrow. where are we having this um at the british council okay. hall and um, we have um, people like um Professor um, Kofi Ejikum oh, of University of Ghana, a giant in, a in giant linguistics, in linguistics. Mm. and he is um, coming um, to provide a public lecture, um, um, the scientific study of okay. language, that's okay. linguistics. Right. Mm. Um, we have Ochiame Kwame who right. uses language Rab as, Rab Doctor <laughs> as business. Mm. He, he, he lives on, on, on language, right. he sings in language, mm. he, he perceives entertainment. Okay. And how does he do it and mm. how is it beneficial? We have a lawyer, Yao Boafo, okay. who is doing great and mm. would come from the legal and democratic governance perspective. Right. 
and also throw emphasis on the importance of chieftaincy mm. in modern democratic okay. dispensation. Mm. I see uh, a deputy uh, speaker of parliament as well, Joe Sewusu, former Wusu. president uh, Kufo himself yes. is going to be because there. Because the Queen Mother, Nana Sewabunso, is going also to be going there. to be there, and Chief. there is going to be um, um, a panel discussion okay. where they would all share experiences and information. Five p.m. tomorrow. Five p.m. tomorrow. Vincent Prepomeno, I thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And uh, Vincent Prepomeno is the president of the. Uh, Asante Professionals Club. And uh, know that tomorrow we're meeting at the uh, British Council, 5 p.m. You've got to be there. We're learning language, chieftaincy, uh, and democracy all put together in a modern perspective. What do you need to know about it? We'll take a break. We'll return. There's more here on your day. Right there. And I know that Sadia is ending. Uh, the 50th episode of Sadia will end on Monday. And uh, we'll take a break shortly, Sadia. I trust you have enjoyed the episodes. We'll be back. Yeah, after just a short break. Uh, so keep your dials on TV3, First Team News, Best in Entertainment. And I've been joined by Clifford Tete, is an Action National Coordinator. And Ashley uh, Forjo is a Programs Manager of the Africa Business Center for Developing Education. Guys, welcome. Good morning. You look sharp. Good I like, morning, morning. I like your outfits, so. though. <laughs> so, so we're talking about how to bridge the gap between academia and industry and all of that, trying to find that link. First of all, what does the outlook you know, present to us? Is the gap widening? Is it closing up? What is it, Clifford? Okay, so I, I would say that it's closing up. I mean, with people like us around doing our best, the, mm. the, the gap is closing up. You're doing our best to close You're it up. You're doing your best to yeah. do. What exactly are you doing? I, I'm curious, at the Africa Business Center, what do you do sure. to, to bridge the gap? Um, okay, okay. Yeah. sure. You want um, to pick it up? What we do at the African Business Center for Developing Education is we go into schools, we take professionals back into the classroom. Okay. We focus on mentorship, scholarships, and internships okay. to try and bridge that gap. I like that. Mentorships, scholarships, and internships. And internships. internships. Yeah. So we're threefold. We don't just focus on one or the other. Right. We try and look at it from a holistic kind of place. Mm. Um, so what we do is we take professionals back into the classroom, okay. both at the secondary and tertiary level, mm -hmm. to go and mentor students, Absolutely. teach them about soft skills that many of our graduates lack mm. in today's world. So that's what we do. That's our mandate. Mm. Yeah. And, and since you've been doing this, what has been the impact? What has been the results that you see? Uh, and I'm asking this because of how the pedagogical approach that are used in school mm -hmm. and how you'd want to take them from that and toss them into the world of work. What has been the impact? What we've seen with our mentorship, first of all, is the desire for more information, mm -hmm. that there is a clear lack in terms of just kind of career guidance, what, okay. what is available to the students. Mm -hmm. They're dying yeah. for knowledge in the schools. So when we take that back, you see the desire. Mm. And when you apply that knowledge, you see its impact mm. there and then in the way the students interact with you, the kind okay. of questions that they ask. Mm. With regards to mentorship, it's very qualitative. Mm. You can't really quantify right. the impact. But mm. with regards to our internships, we've had success with our internships. Mm. We have students that we've placed being retained, mm. which is a clear sign that the something, person, something, something is being right. done. Let, let's zero down agribusiness exactly. because it's been a major talk. First, do you think that we're just paying lip service to agribusiness as a country? What do we need to do? Okay, so I don't. I think we just have to pay more attention to it. We need to um, conscientize people, mm. bring people's awareness to um, what they can achieve from agribusiness. And that's okay. what we are doing right. with the forum we are, we are mm. organizing um, tomorrow. The scientific research. Into yeah, so what we are doing is the AFGAC, what we call okay. the annual forum on government industry and academia collaboration. Right. So what we are doing is bringing people from government, bringing people from the public in, mm. um, public sector, bringing okay. um, industry and academia together to dialogue mm. and find ways to okay. commercialize scientific research mm. in the areas mm. of agribusiness and also promote agribusiness mm. amongst the youth. I mean, we find a lot of them going out looking for white color jobs. Right. And then there's a lot to be done in agribusiness. So we mm. are trying to bring the mindset, shape the mindset of the youth to look towards um, agribusiness. I, I know a few a few bankers who actually did uh, major in agri in the oh, university, okay. so <laughs> I, I'm not surprised at all. But tell me, uh, Ashley, so this whole research, mm -hmm. you're done conducting the research. Is, is there anybody out there who is interested in picking it, say, we want to factor it into our national plan? Okay, so we're, we, we didn't conduct the research ourselves. Okay. What we're saying is the research is available. Okay. It will surprise you the amount of information lying on the shelf about things to do with... Are they being used? No, which is what we are we trying to... Yeah. 
bring to the fo mm. uh, to the forefront okay. that there's all this information available about what you can do with all our natural resources mm. and that is what we have in abundance okay agriculture but we're not doing anything with it we're not commercializing it is, enough. is, is it because people don't have access to funds which is why they, they would that not is one of the biggest of issues the problem, yeah. so that is one of the things we're trying to tackle in this forum we're bringing the financial aspect of it, talking about okay. what are the real opportunities okay. available mm. to students mm. or the youth? Mm. What are mm. the challenges they face? Why mm. can't they access the necessary capital they need okay. to actually take an idea okay. and put it on a shelf? Mm. Clifford, how do we reorient the mindset? Is the conference, for example, going to tackle that, to reorient the mindset of the youth, especially to focus more on agri are we going to look at that? Yeah, so the conference is going to focus on that. So what we are doing is that the conference is in um, three sections. The very first section is where we have uh, people from government and the, the public sector speak okay. on what they are doing, policy, right. uh, policy available for, um, for agribusiness people. Mm. The second section is, like she said, where we are going to bring um, people from the financial institutions right. to talk about how they can help mm -hmm. um, agribusiness people in the areas of finance and all of that. And mm. then the third section is where we bring people who are doing things in agribusiness okay. already. Mm. So we have people like um, Sankofa Snacks coming all um, around to discuss mm -hmm. and f just so we can get the idea of we can do something in agribusiness mm -hmm. and that way we are shaping the minds of the mm -hmm. youth to look towards um, I, I, my appetite is wet enough tell me why are we having this this function the the conference um the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences okay. tomorrow tomorrow yes. right starting at 9 30 a.m it's free free yes. yes why do you put such a program together for free because our desire is to educate okay to share the information, to mm. make it more accessible right. so that people can actually go out and do things. If we put a price on it, we, we won't achieve. You achieve. Okay, yeah. so uh, Academy of Arts and Sciences tomorrow, 9 a.m. Who can attend? Um, if it's relevant to you, come. Okay. If, if you're interested in agribusiness. Yeah, I mean, if you're interested in agribusiness, you're passionate about agribusiness, you're passionate about commercialization of scientific research in mm. the area of agribusiness, right. this program is for you. Okay, so this whole talk about GMO, for example, I'm sneaking this in. Uh, GMO is one of the scientific research that's been done for agribusiness. Are we looking at it as well as a people? In, I'm asking for your opinion. If we had a chance to toss it in, there have been debates and all of that. Are we looking at it? Within our forum? Yes. Within. Not specifically. Not, not now. Not, not immediately. Not immediately. Okay. No. Okay. So tomorrow, we'll see you guys uh, at the Academy of Arts and Sciences. Yes. 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. And it's free? It's free. You can attend night to what time? About 5. 5. So okay. But will there, be, will there be food? I'm interested in the food. Because we're talking about that great thing. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be, you'll be surprised. Clifford, you have, you have a yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd want us to acknowledge um, our sponsors. Quickly. All right. So what we're doing, so we're doing this in partnership with the um, CSI, or the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, mm -hmm. um, with the Ministry of Agri um, Agriculture, the MESTI Rural Enterprise Program, Afgri John Deere, and our main sponsors um, is the BUSAC Fund, okay. when, with their development partners, that's the Danida USAID, mm -hmm. and then the EU. Okay. And then we have Glyco Capital as well, right. and then 3FM. Oh, absolutely, we're grateful. We're always proud to be supporters. I thank you very much, guys, for coming. We'll see thank you tomorrow. You. Great, great. And uh, that's how the cookie crumbles. But no, as I told you, Sadia is ending. Uh, the fiftieth episode of Sadia is ending uh, on Monday. You've got to flip your dials and keep it on uh, TV Three First in News, Best in Entertainment, with story that's telling your own life story. Sadia, uh, we may have some of the cast here on Friday to tell us what the experience has been like, and you can also join us on our tweets when a ticket to so we'll see analysis number 12 and if you haven't bought a copy of the junior graphic today go out and buy because Mera 3FM and I can are putting together a very special package for fathers on the 16th of June and you get a chance to write a memo to your dad three special things you want the world to know about your dad all of that happening on our auspices and uh, happy birthday if it's your birthday Cliff Fathers are celebrated as much as mothers are. Let's 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 uh, let's assume that she's not here. <laughs> Do you feel the fathers are celebrated as much as they? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's weak. He has Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Bright, Amma will join me tomorrow. It's going to be Thursday. But meet me at the Accra International Conference Center, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 10 p.m. Uh, and us will show us what we've been itching to see. I hope that the country stays the same after that expose. Good morning. No, 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 no.